Welcome to Dr. Janice's 30 Minute Science, where you can do science experiments with your kids in 30 minutes or less with things that you can find in the grocery store or that you already have at home. Today you're going to make a camera obscura using scissors, two identically sized paper cups or plastic cups. They just need to be cups that block out light so you can either paint cups that don't or buy cups that are already come with the light blocked out. A push pin, be careful with that. A flashlight, we'll use this later on. Some tape, preferably dark tape or masking tape, something that will block out light. Some parchment paper, now this you can find at your local grocery store in the baking section. And then, something to block out the light. This can be a blanket, or a jacket, or a long sweater, anything that will block out the light. I like this one because it looks like this sheets that they used to put over those themselves in those old movies where you saw people using old style cameras like this. And you will get to use it like that very shortly. So, the first thing you need to do is to create a pinhole in one of your cups. Now this is a pinhole camera, so you'll be making a pinhole. Now you want to turn the cup upside down and push the pin right into the center of the hole. Don't make the pinhole too large. So literally, just fold the cup down and push. You should get a pinhole just like that. Now, if you keep it upside down, you won't have to worry about hurting yourself with the pin. Pull it out, and you've got your pinhole, your pinhole camera. Next, you need to make a viewer. So for this, you're going to take your other cup, and you can start by making a hole with your pin, but you're going to enlarge this hole so that you can view it with your eye. So I'm take this pin, I'm going to make another pinhole in the center of this, but this time I'm going to move that pin around to enlarge the hole, and then I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to make that hole even bigger. Now the advantage of using paper cups in this is you don't have to worry, as you would with plastic cups, about ending up with shards that could get in your eyes. So, you just want to make that hole a little bit bigger. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can push your scissors through, just like that, and sort of swivel your scissors around. Remember to be careful with this, and always supervise young children, or even older children, or even yourself, when you're using sharp things like scissors. We just want to enlarge this until we make a nice viewing hole. You can even stick, if it's a paper cup, you can even stick your finger in there and make it sort of a nice round viewing hole there. So you can see that this is a nice round viewing hole. We're going to use it like this. All right, see my eye through there. Now, you need to assemble your camera. So, I'm going to take your parchment paper. I'm going to move this part over here. Now you want this to fit on your pinhole cup so that you have a place to focus your image. So we put this on the paper, and there's a couple different ways to do this. If you have a pencil, you can trace it around with a pencil, or you can just use your scissors and cut it out freehand, which is what I'm going to do. But you want to make sure that you leave enough around the edges that you can tape the edges of this parchment paper around your cup. Here. And the great thing about this project is you can do this with multiple kids at the same time, and each one can make their own. So I just put this on here. Yeah, that square looks like it's about good enough for that one. I'm going to go ahead and cut this square out. And don't worry about it being exact. You won't hear that often in science. So, now we've got our pinhole cup. Remember, we're using the pinhole cup with the tiny, tiny hole on it. That's the tiny, tiny hole one. And we're going to take our parchment paper and we're going to tape it so that it almost looks like a drum on the outside of this cup. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. And again, you can use any sort of tape for this step. But what you want is to make this nice and tight like a drum. So try to make it even without crinkles, nice and straight.
There we go. Now, if you stop at this step, you could actually take your flashlight and shine it through the pinholes. You want to shine it through the pinhole end, and you might actually be able to see that light through the end of your cup on the parchment paper. And you might actually, if you look very closely and turn the lights out and have a completely dark room, you might actually be able to see an image right here on your parchment paper. We want to actually see an image of the room around us. So that's where our second viewing cup comes in. So this time we're going to take the pinhole cup and the viewing cup and we're going to put the wide ends together. And now we're going to connect these. Now you don't absolutely have to connect these. You could hold them in place, but most kids get really frustrated if they come apart again and again. And this is where some light blocking tape would be helpful. So you can either you, you can use regular tape, that's fine, but this is where masking tape might be helpful to block out the light a bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and use regular clear tape. And I'm just going to tape these two together. I'm going to go start with a layer connecting the rims together. And this can be frustrating for little kids especially, so make sure you help them. The parchment paper makes it a bit trickier to tape these together. So you want to do a combination of going around the rim as well as across the cups. And that will help keep, keep things together a bit more. Now make sure if you're going across the cups that you have a nice long piece of tape and you pick a spot where it's going to connect to both the paper part of the cup, not just the parchment paper, and go all the way down to the bottom cup. There we go. You can see already how that's helping keep those cups together. So we want to go around. tape in more places. You want the cups to be completely aligned on their wrist. And if you like, you could put a strip of dark paper around the rims to completely block out the light again. So what you're trying to do is make this completely light tight. Now that won't be entirely necessary as long as you have your nice blanket or scarf or sweater or anything that will block completely. If you hold it over the rims when you do the next step, then it's not as necessary to have this as light tight as you could. But if you want it to use it outside, and it helps to have this completely light tight between the rims, otherwise you're going to have a hard time seeing the image inside the pinhole camera. So I'm going to go ahead and do a long strip of tape here and try to make sure these get taped together completely. we have our camera obscura completely made. The next part is to use it. Now this is tricky because the first time you look through it, all you're going to see is the parchment paper. It really helps if you have a completely darkened room and you have something to focus on. Now I don't recommend that you use this to look at the sun. You might be tempted to go outside and look at the sun with this, but you'll get a headache very fast. So what I recommend is you have a flashlight at the ready and you can go outside and use this outside, but don't you use it to look directly at the sun. So, have your flashlight ready. Now the idea is to find the pin image of the flashlight inside your camera obscure by putting your eye to it. And then you're going to shine your flashlight right into that pinhole. Now the idea is not to blind yourself in the eye with it. The idea is to actually get the light to shine through the pinhole and then the light will bend and actually make an image on the parchment paper. Now, the image that it makes on the parchment paper may surprise you, and that's where the science comes in. So, I'm going to go ahead and have a look through here. Now, I'm not going to put my 
blanket over me yet, but you're going to need to do that if you want to see anything and you're going to need to darken your room. That really helps. So, eye to it. You may find it helps to close one eye. I find that gives some people a headache over time, so you're going to need to make your own choice about that. So, turn sideways here. So, the first thing most people see especially if they have an LED flashlight such as this one that has individual little lights in it. The first thing most people are going to see are those individual little lights as opposed to just a, a collection of light. And that's where you know you're starting to see your image. So, go ahead, go ahead and look in here. And, oh, now it may take some angling. You notice that I'm angling this in different ways. And now I can actually see those lights. I can see the individual lights, which means that I'm not just seeing light, I'm not just seeing shadow, I'm actually seeing an image. Now, the fun part to do, and this is the, the easiest thing to do first, because you may go outside and see some trees and see some interesting things, but what I recommend, the first thing you do, is you find that flashlight. You find the image of the flashlight, not just the light. You can actually see the bulb itself or the bulbs themselves. So you're looking through your light, and you're shining your flashlight so that you can see the lights themselves. So that might be a bit tricky to keep. There we go. And then stick your finger across the light. So either from the from the top or from the bottom. Now if you do this with your pinky, you can really see it against the light. And it helps this if you have a friend. So you can hold you can have your child hold their camera camera obscura. And you can hold the flashlight and you can hold things in front of the light or just stick your finger in front of the light at first. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up. I'm going to hold the flashlight up. Now I'm going to hold my index finger in front of it because that's the easier thing for me to do. But you just remember you want to find the image on that parchment paper. So not just the light, but the actual image of the bulbs themselves. And you might, it might find that you have trouble doing this because you'll notice something really interesting about this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my finger in front of the light. Now, it's most important that you do, do this first from the top or from the bottom. And I'll tell you why in a sec. So go ahead and stick your finger from the top or from the bottom. And when you stick your finger from the top of the light, say to your child, I'm sticking my finger down from the top of the light. So my finger is at the top. And here's the fun science part. So you're going to stick your finger from the top. And this is going to be a whole lot easier to see, again, if you use your darkened blanket or scarf or sweater. Something very big, though. I recommend something big like a blanket or a big sweater like this. If you put it over your head, have your child put it over the head and then cover the rims of the cup like that. There we go. And then hold their hands around it so it literally forms a light blocker around it. And you'll notice that this looks just like an old-fashioned camera. You've seen this in the movies, I know you have, where they put the hood over their heads and they stand and they put it over the back and then they look through it, this is exactly what you're seeing. So you go ahead, and that'll block out more light, and that'll make everything easier to see. So you go ahead and hold your flashlight. Look for not just the light itself, but look for the image of the light bulbs on your parchment paper, and this can be tricky to find. Again, so you're gonna have to try a bunch of different ways. Oh, oh there it is, I see it, I see it. And just try it until you actually see the image of the lights themselves. Now the point is that you're going to be focusing that on a pinhole. And, oh, I see them, I see them. There we go, got a nice clear image of that. I'm going to stick my finger up from the top of the light. And you'll know when your child has seen a clear image of this flashlight with your finger sticking out from the top because they're going to say, you're not sticking your finger out from the top, you're sticking your finger out from the bottom. And that's the science. So you've got your light, and you're shining it into the pinhole. But the way that the light bounces and bends on the inside of the cup means that you're going to see an image that's upside down. And this is the way our eyes see light, but because our brains are used to that, we see our images as right side up. So this camera obscura can be used all over the house. You can use it outside. And it's a fun little project to do. Now, if your arms get tired from holding this up to your eyes all the time, you could take some pipe cleaners and make a little stand for it and hold it up like a pair of opera glasses. That would be fun, too. Or you could even fashion a little stand out of it, out of some pipe cleaners and something with a weight on it. 
or maybe a tripod like you had for a camera. But anyway, this is a fun little project to explore the way light bounces and physics. So have fun with science and have fun with your kids with science. Have a good day. Bye.